Hello and welcome to a new episode of Coding Coffee with me, Francis Peck. We have quite an episode today, you can already see here on the screen. We're going to have a look at the Cometeer data that was discussed in the James Hoffman episode. Surprising and fascinating results from the taste test that was of course done in the great american taste test now for anyone interested in following along you can basically get all that data from around four four thousand people having tasted uh, by clicking on this link i have done that before so i will skip this now um just coming back this kind of project was for me also an inspiration to finally launch something I have wanted to do for a longer time, which is trying to also build up a database um, of taste tests, comparing different home roasting options. Because as a home roaster, you, you basically want to know what, how much do I need to spend on my roasting equipment? So it would really be nice having a benchmark out there, um, a rigorously scientific setup experiment, which I would do to the best of my abilities to then compare the results of different roasting methods. But we're not there yet uh, by a long shot. We're still just at the one year that probably Kickstarter just gives you to, to not have like a big round zero there. <laughs> Um, anyway, check out this Kickstarter. I'll have the link also um, below if you're interested in this topic and citizen science. Now let's get to the data that we can already study, which is the one um, from Comet here. So um, if you followed previous episodes, um, and I recommend actually um, going at least to the first one in this playlist, uh, because it shows you how to go to Python Anywhere, set up an account, and uh, then basically you're just ready to go to follow along um, with the coding that we'll do now. Um, when you're in your home directory, I actually just made a um, folder here, just called data, um, where I then just um, went to upload the um, data set from Cometeer. Um, you just have to do uh, upload a file. So once you've clicked on this one here, that will relocate to your download tab usually. And then um, you're good to go to upload it here. So let's go to a console. Apparently, I still have one open, and now you can see, okay, so we'll just do a list, you see we have the Between Two Cracks website, and then we have the data folder, where we can now okay, see that file. So. Before really analyzing the data, let's just have a look at the structure. There's supposed to be around 4,000 rows, so we can actually do that with the WC command and just ask lines. Okay, yes. Um, so, 4,000. 840 records, probably the first one is a header showing the columns of the data. Um, and you can basically just head, then you do N, that's for the amount of lines from the top of a file you would like to print. Just write one for the top line, and then we can do S dot to copy again the file name. Wow, this this shows us what's in the file. Submission ID, response, so it's anonymized as the file name indicates, but of course, Cometeer still 
knows probably who's who. Um, submit an ad. What is your age? What is your zip code? How many cups of coffee do you? So basically, what we're having here is um, for columns exactly the questions that were being asked, which I actually find pretty amazing that they're sharing all of this because as I was going through the questionnaire, I found you know they, they wanted to know um, quite quite precise gender please specify here yeah, what what did I have to fill in um, there um, household income um, see the only kind of question that I thought was kind of lacking in, in, in there um, you know trying to get useful information on what kind of frozen coffees can we sell which I mean, understandable. It's it's a company. They they want to know um, how much reach do they have with their business plan. But the only thing I kind of found lacking was the question: Do you have a freezer? Because, for example, I don't have a freezer. It would have been interesting for them to know that. And in fact, well, they don't ship to Europe, so I didn't have those coffees to to taste. Um, but uh, maybe in the United States, just everybody has a freezer. Could be. Let's get into the data for real. So, okay, IPython is basically a, an enhanced Python shell. So, a shell is just how you're interacting with either an operating system in a textual way or a pro programming interpreter. Um, which is a program that can interpret programming language like Python. Just giving a, a bit of information around it if anybody is uh, following that wasn't on board for previous episodes. Now, in Python, the, the main workhorse for doing not the data analysis, but the loading of the data is pandas and usually you would say import pandas as pd all right and now we can just do pd reads csv and then we go again to our directory that has that file name so again you can just use tab to expand folder names or file names and let's just see what happens out of the box just as we had the head commands for um, on the Linux operating system to get the top of a file um, once a file has been loaded with pandas you can also ask just the top of it so I'm doing it this way for the simple reason um, that I just wanted to check if it would load correctly. Now we kind of already saw in the file that it was just having commas. So sometimes if you have dot commas or other kind of separators, it gets more tricky. And now we can just do data equals like that. And uh, if you now again, just ask the head on this data, it will just show it the same way. So we have all our columns that we can ask by just doing data.columns. It will show basically all those, those questions. And um, here is kind of the difference with how a lot of people would approach this um, if they are not exposed to programming. They they would just get this file and open it in um, Excel. Um, and then if you would want to have any kind of summaries, you would go to maybe some Excel functionalities. Now, now we can actually um, ask the things that we want to know more directly. So we can do, what is your age? Let me see. H. And then we have this. 
Um, this has been shown in and the episode with James and showing it nice plots, but at this point we're just kind of having a look at the actual data. And then you just kind of type at the end top value counts and it's basically showing you um, the histogram. And you see a lot of the respondents were between, well, most of them were between 25 and 34. So um, when it's counting the values in a certain category, it will kind of already show you the top age. Um, let's have a look now at one of the more challenging questions. Let's say, um, let's have a look at gender. Okay, so um, male, most male that we saw, we did have a hundred non-binary people. Are they really non-binary or they prefer not to say and uh, chose non-binary? It's, it's all good. Uh, it's uh, non, none of my business, but we can have a look and add it here in this non-anonymized. Uh, data. Now, um, when we have gender, do we specify? Do we specify? So what's, what's happening here? Um, oh, oh, um, well, they, they did have, I guess that was a general comment, cis, transgender female, non-binary woman, male plus female. I guess maybe that was a, a couple sharing the tasting and getting a consensus um, experience, um, responses. I'm offended by the question. I, yeah, I, that, it was a little bit my, my feeling also that the questionnaire was too deep, not in a philosophical sense, but in a wanting to know i guess too much i'm curious if it would have passed a university ethical commission um which which isn't a, a guarantee for having a you know ethically okay questionnaire um and maybe there will be committees that's like yeah, okay, you want to analyze the taste preference and there will be connections. Um, gender biology is different. Um, the way we perceive the environment around us, it, it will actually depend on that. Um, so trying to analyze that, I, I get it. I mean, I, I'm curious. I, I will not actually um, remove this from the database because it's it's intriguing. Maybe we, we do find some um, interesting answers with that. So this episode, I'll keep it short. It's just kind of a first introduction to um, loading the, um, the data having a first look at a few columns and seeing how the values are distributed and in a further episode after doing some some homework and trying to model um, some relationships between the variables um, i will come back to this data set and who knows maybe in the future if i'm able to generate enough bus around my kickstarter I will also be able to analyze some of that data. That would be very cool. Um, thanks for following this one and hope to see you on a next adventure.